what's up everybody welcome back to the channel got a good week lined out for progress we're actually going to be um, turning the red oak barnuminium over to our clients this week which is always an exciting time which means we will be in there uh, doing a tour video you know and getting pictures and everything that's involved and it's always a little bit uh, stressful down to the wire but all is well on this project we've been uh, you know kind of working our way there so uh, we don't lack much and brandy's over there today and i'm on my way i'm going to go drop a disc off to uh, drew this morning because we were doing some filming and doing some updating uh, last week. So Drew's gonna be working on that. Uh, big shout out to Drew for getting these videos out. Um, had a great Father's Day weekend. Um, and today, well, first off, yesterday was my uh, son Jaden's birthday. He's 13 years old, uh, you know, growing into a fine young man and uh, I'm proud of my kids, you know. We have four kids and, um, you know, it's always great to see them with their independent ideas and things that are coming, coming forth in their thinking and uh, to see them take on a little more responsibility. Um, we have three sons and one daughter who pretty much rules the roost so anyhow uh had a blessed weekend but my uh today is my birthday so i am you know yet last year was a big year i hit hit a milestone hit the big 40. anyways enough about that there was actually something that I wanted to bring to y'all's attention. So I was thinking on this the other day about buying land and some of the key tips that I would recommend when you are purchasing land. So obviously location is a big part to do with it, but some other key matters that you want to think about when you're buying land is number one, is there a good spot to build? Now, you can carve up land, you can shape land, you can add to the land, you can scrape dirt from one side of the land to the other land. But, you know, if you could start with somewhat of a decent build site where you don't have to spend the money to dig down uh, or and put, you know, you, you might not need piers if you had a good spot to build on you could uh, still have a fully engineered foundation but maybe not have to go to that degree to put piers so i would say uh, that would be one key thing that i would look at is is there a build site uh, or a decent build site with minimal slope on it uh, that's number one um, a good spot or a pad site on the property is that a requirement not necessarily is it a good asset to have yes absolutely uh, so because what you got to understand is if you're bringing in say more than two or three foot uh, of new soil um, you're going to need piers which is going to incur additional cost uh, no matter what foundation you do uh, so that's something to think about unless you get compaction and you know do the whole nine yards there uh, as you go on the excavation process but again that costs money too so those are things to think about secondly uh, you want to make sure when you're looking for land that there are no liens on the property so liens are uh, can, can be an issue when you go to closing. The bank is definitely gonna want to make, make sure that all the liens are cleared off the property. Uh, that would be something that could definitely hold you up. Uh, so searching for land, uh, you, you know, if you're buying from an individual, 
especially if you were paying cash and you're trying to go to a quick close. That's why you want title insurance and you want to go to the title company uh, to make that happen. So thirdly, I would say in buying land, uh, you want to make sure that you have good access accessibility uh, for utilities. So electrical, is there a good way to uh, place the electrical on site? Uh, some of these things you can do through ex exploration uh, with your, you know, the local electrical provider. And you could uh, maybe set up a meeting on the property, talk to them about how you could get power in if there's not power. If there's already power, then you're golden. So it definitely uh, makes that property worth more if there's already say a meter base or there's a power uh, supply at some point. Also the water. Um, a lot of properties, especially on rur rural properties, that's kind of hard to say, a lot of properties like that <clears throat> don't automatically have uh, enough water demand or supply to be able to, um, you know, run enough water to your build site. So this is a good question that you need to ask when you're searching for property. Um, it's not like, you know, in a subdivision where the uh, everything's already established and already supplied. You have sewer and all that. You know, this this is totally different. Um, so, you know, the uh, water can be expensive if you if you're if you have to drill a well. Um, you'd want to seek that out and determine, you know, if it's uh, possible, uh, if there's any water that you could drill and get as far as a well is concerned. So, um, and then if it's got to be a, a bigger line ran to get the demand that you would need for a residential dwelling, you'd want to seek that out with the local water company as well. So. Uh, that's another uh, good bit of information there that you want to think about when you're searching for land. Um, uh, another thing is on a piece of property is making sure that there's a, a good way of entry um, that you have. Uh, I think in I know in, in most Texas counties, uh, the requirement is 150 foot of road access. So you want to make sure that that property is obviously not landlocked and that you do have access in order to, um, you know, put an entry. So you don't want to, you want to buy a piece of land that's landlocked. The other thing is important to know what type of soil is on the property because uh, soil, when you're in, like I said, in a country setting, more than likely you're going to need a septic system. The type of soil that you have, let's say if it's all rock, it might mean that you would need an aerobic septic system as opposed to a conventional septic system. Well, for some folks, that's a problem for them. You know, they don't want uh, the aerobic. They would rather have the conventional. So uh, it's all about preference. You know, each system works. It's just a matter of determining what you would want. And then also the better the soil, uh, the less you'd have to put in on the prep site on the beginning. So um, very, very important to know what type of soil is there. Uh, you also probably wanna know uh, what type of runoff or uh, a, is adjacent to the property so if you had a lot of water in a, in a rainy season that runs from one the neighboring property next door might could flood out your property you know so those are uh, things you want to understand the flood uh, history of the property you'd want to research that and to know well if it's a really flat piece of land uh, is this property going to flood? You know, uh, that's something key that you want to keep in mind when you're purchasing a uh, property. So, all right, I hope that helps some of you out. You know, I'm sure there's things that I'm missing that are key 
And if you guys think of something, go ahead and put it in the comments below. Hey, see if we can get a thousand likes. That'd be awesome. Sure do appreciate it. Uh, if you guys haven't already subscribed to our channel, I hope you'll do that now. Um, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Um, those accounts are growing as well. We're doing uh, all that we can to provide content and to uh, stay in communication with you guys. So uh, I'm Josh Helm, wishing you all the best. Thanks for watching. Texas Best.